discussed uh, we had a just a call committee meeting last weekend that the uh, BC code uh, that I felt the uh, NBCC 2015 was just uh, uh, voted in December 2018. So people said, well, we better talk about more, a little bit more about the NBC 2015. So I just went to the website check here about your uh, building code. Uh, so to confirm that it was uh, issued in uh, December 10th, 2018. Have you started using it? Those who work in practice? Are you all the, uh, some are practitioners, I suppose? Yeah. Okay. 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 Have you started using it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, <coughs> I also noticed it's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good, actually. Yeah, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen that. I just, I just saw that on the web when preparing that the government uh, decided, decided that the code would be free and in the, for the next edition. So uh, the royalties that we see as free, and that's why they sell you the code at a very really high price. And only that will be that here, but not for this edition. That's a major change, I think, in the code. It doesn't look at it, but that's good at the country. How to go to have free access to the documents. So this is the case in the US, for example. It's not here. So uh, hopefully that uh, that will spread also to the CSA uh, standard to some degree. But as I said, I will be talking about NBC 2015 and 1614, uh, but I will also discuss a bit what's coming uh, for 2020 with the code and uh, what has been prepared in the 1619, but that will be pretty short. Uh, and please, if you have any questions, uh, uh, or if you want to discuss a little bit more some of these aspects, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to discuss with our NBC 2015. I will present a bit seismic data. Probably you know about it already, but uh, if you don't mind, I will just move through it because after that, I will explain what is uh, what is proposed as a change for seismic data for 2020. And I think it's good to have uh, an overview of what we have in the uh, uh, design spectral side effects, uh, design and new hazard vision. Uh, that's uh, that may be applicable to this area here, not necessarily exactly here, but in, in some of these area, the areas of BC. Uh, this is new in NBC and uh, 2015. The structural irregularities, uh, there is a new one in uh, 2015, there is a new one in 2020. And uh, periods for low rise uh, buildings, the text will move that. Uh, I have a couple more items here, foundation provisions, uh, a VC award when we finish those ones. And uh, I have many slides on that, but it was too long, so I'm going to remove that part. And also on uh, non linear dynamic analysis, so there's new material now in the code for that. I also removed the, the slide, but I can uh, say two words on the code. Going to be uh, 2020 code. <coughs> okay, seismic data in 2015. Uh, so the data will be it is presented the same way as in previous codes. Uh, we have all the spectral audit <coughs> given in PG and the PG Bay, or PG B, but all the size as usual. Uh, you may know that all that data is also available on the website of the Canadian Geological Service. Uh, you can have access to the maps, for example. Uh, shown uh, here, all these maps are available for you. The map that I was just showing is the separate version at 0.5 seconds, uh, but you can actually uh, map for a different uh, period as well as for the B, so that's available there. And also, if you want to have a seismic data for design purposes, they are available there. Uh, of course, they are already published in the code. But if you want, you can have the data for any site in Canada. So you just enter in that two and um, and then you just ask for the data to be computed, and you will have uh, access to that data. So I think that's not giving enough, for example. So in the, the way it works is the uh, all the calculations are already been done. The 
of the transition that, that will be hazard at a different point in the country, and the values are interpolated for the given site you want. Okay, and of course, in the, in the building code, we already have about 170 cities for which the data are uh, given. But if you wish, you can ask the data at the location. Then we get the close values here, the same values. And you get also the values around okay, at those points here in the grid. So then you can see a bit of variation, and if you wish, you can adapt or change with the numbers so to have a more comfortable uh, value. So all that is available on the website. I'm talking about the website here because uh, in 2020, there will be no data published anymore. Everything we should on the website. Okay, so that uh, you have to uh, start just using it. Uh, if you wish, instead of adding a table like this on the on, on your screen, you can also ask them to add a PDF report, and then you have a nice sheet like this that you can put in your calculation. And then you have the seismic data. Seismic data is published at two percent in fifty years, so that's the design level. Uh, but um, as we will discuss, uh, the values are published also for. Uh, <coughs> A shorter return periods or lower or higher probability of uh, occurrence in the 50 years 5%, 10%, 40%. Uh, that's used in the bridge code today, but uh, that will be used eventually in the uh, in the building code as well. There will be some performance based uh, requirements in the 2020. So uh, now the values are being calculated uh, for that purpose. Okay, of course, you know how it works. So here we have the values at different periods. And we use that value to those values to, uh, to get the design spectrum. Uh, of course, one aspect that you might be interested in is how much the values vary or how we compare to previous condition of the code. It's what I'm doing here, the 2015, 2010, so we do that here. Uh, as you can see, for short periods, there's a significant reduction in the data. Uh, here it's about the same. And of course, for longer periods, now we have values of the uh, spectral absolute. Or calculated at five seconds and ten seconds. Uh, before we have values calculated only up to two seconds. This one was taken at half of this value and then it was flat here. So now we have more uh, refined calculation being done for long period range. Uh, and most of the time, uh, this value is much lower than what we uh, used to have uh, in the past uh, ten seconds. Of course, this is for very tall structures, but still. Uh, this reduction is compared to the previous coefficient. If you look at the, across Canada, the changes, what is in red is our degrees, uh, and what is in green are degrees in the values. Uh, what you see here are the values at 0.2 seconds, 0.5, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 10. Uh, again, in the previous point, we have value at 4 seconds, that is the value of value at 2 seconds, so I, I think that is the here. And uh, this is uh, from Western Canada to Eastern Canada, <coughs> and just the main cities. And as you can see, uh, in short period, most of the value decrease. There are some increase and some dislocation, but generally speaking, value uh, in the short period of the low ice buildings decrease, and the increase here in the, uh, most of the places for long period. Because this is based on, uh, I would say, I was to say, new seismic. Uh, information or knowledge. Uh, it is already nearly 10 years old. Uh, as this is 2015 code. All that work was done between 2010 and 2015. But this one, the knowledge that the people had at the time, and that produced that uh, change between 2010 and 2015. But as I mentioned, for a very long period, uh, significant decrease. So those are ratios of this is 25 percent, 40 percent, 30 percent of what we had before the work. It's different like the one uh, for. Uh, in the West, uh, uh, I will come back to the slides and some numbers. Um, at long periods, the value will decrease generally because of the inclusion of those uh, earthquakes in the color district hazard bubble. Uh, before they were treated, there was a subduction of the earthquake in the country. They didn't get the most of them. That is, uh, we have uh, all the uh, color district models. Uh, for those two types of earthquake, and those ones were treated separately, and we took a larger of the two. Now, this was put also in the basket of the probabilistic hazard calculation, and that increased the value, especially at long uh, periods. 
because those oceans are blocked at the Mediterranean and the Mediterranean. This is uh, all the cities in British Columbia. And as we saw previously, in the short period range, the second is very small, and we are going for that one. Just want to put up the cities. Um, a short period, it's uh, a reduction or slight increase uh, in most places, but uh, as soon as you go to one second, two second, five seconds, four, five seconds, and there are large increases here uh, in the range of 20, 40 <coughs> percent uh, due to the increase of the subject in the approach and the hazard calculation. And again, of course, for a very long period, then we have decreased because now we can evaluate properly <coughs> the uh, hazard of the second acceleration uh, for a long period. Uh, <coughs> if you look at the design spectrum, we just look at the data. We have design spectrum, uh, of course, it's built upon the uh, S data, the spectral acceleration that we have given to us, and modified for side effects. So this is what we we'll discussing here. In 2010, we had uh, two uh, side coefficients, F A and F B. That F A would be used to apply for a short period of 20 seconds. So you see that factor right here. And F B, uh, which is determined at one second, uh, needs to be applied for all the other spectrum factors. In, in 2015, this has been changed significantly. Uh, there is now we have a side coefficient at 0.2, another one at 0.5, another one at 1, another one at 2, 5, and 10. So we did those calculations to come up with side amplification at different periods. Okay, so this is, you know, really, uh, I, I don't like to use the word accurate, precisely because I'm actually side to calculate, but say more representative of the, um, of the actual conditions. Okay, so we have all these different factors. Those factors are determined, of course, for different side classes here. Uh, and this is not based in the law of the spectral acceleration, <coughs> but on the, P, on the PGA, and that's a PGA ref, uh, which is defined here in cyber point A, PGA, or PGA, depending on the ratio of the SA at point two to PGA, I don't want to the calculation, but we enter in the table with the PGA, not SA. And then we get, for example, the value of f at 0.5 seconds in the table by integration that we used to do uh, in the past. Okay. So, as I said, there's a table like this for each of the factors of 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 5, and 10 seconds. There's also uh, side coefficients for the PG and PGB that have been given up as well. So, all those tables are given in the code. I'm showing that not to say that it's more complicated. But uh, to show that uh, it's really going to be much more easier because it's easy to get it. Okay, so it's kind of strange to give a presentation on two code at the time. They are uh, going to that amount of additional difficulty and then after that, it's easier enough. But uh, that's the reason. So, uh, first thing you do is you take the value of PGA and that is the PGA red. Okay, and then you select, of course, that's a spreadsheet thing. But then you do have your. Uh, Side class for your location. And if I want to do the F at 0.5, you can the table. It is 0.066, for example, here that the root, so I can try to do that application. Put that there, and try that the S state. And then you do like S. Then. So this, these are the cuts that are given to us by the, the tables on the website. And then we have to try to get the design and spectrum. And we can do this. Okay, so this is the code that we have. Because you can build the, the spreadsheet, but this is what I did in most engineers and we started to use the, the, uh, uh, the MPC uh, 2015 uh, so far. And if you copy those tables in the spreadsheet, that is 4.5 seconds, for example, and you have all your side classes here, and then you enter your PGA, that is this one PGA, rep of 0.1, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 
the cycle tech and site position that I so we can do. We have several factors for these different buildings. Another major change in MVC from G15 is that it's for no hazard uh, limitations. Uh, so before we have exceptions in uh, different places in the code of the two things, but everything has been reported in one set of provisions. When you enter in 4.8, 4.1.8, sorry, of course, it in effect. The first thing it says, except as permitted in sentence two, which is here, okay, you have to calculate the size of the effects according to. <clears throat> 4182. If you jump over 4182, if you are in a so low size region that's defined by these two parameters, yeah. so the at 0.3 and at 2 seconds, if are lower than 0.16 and 0.03 respectively, then this is a low size region. All the design provisions are there. Okay, in this page, in this page, in this page. Okay, everything is here. You don't have to go in 418 anymore. Even the definitions for 418 are after them. And if you just 411, 481 is there, you can go to number two, and all the provisions are there. Uh, for distribution, the portion, the reflection, the parts and portion, everything is in that section. Okay, so this is the uh, life of design engineers so, and uh, what we need to that's a major change. Uh, unfortunately, Pedona doesn't fit in there, so they mess up 16 and 17. Uh, so it's 14 that we fit, but this one doesn't fit. But uh, you can see that in some locations, uh, we might be able uh, to make some that we can use them. Uh, simplify, uh, uh, and simplify the effect to be done in a precise way. So very simple, with the side conditions are here. So everything is in that sort of condition on the form of the point The other thing that, uh, that has changed is uh, this has been in discussion for many years, but this uh, code cycle it was adopted to this building with a uh, single story building with a uh, flexible wood diaphragm that includes a wood diaphragms or timber diaphragms. The diaphragms are not so common, but still we have a lot in Canada. And uh, when we have to build those buildings because of the flexibility of those diaphragms, it's very mm -hmm. sheer, then we see that they have much longer periods that are given by the uh, number of conversations in the code uh, for the given uh, local system that we have. And this is an example of the diaphragm here. At that building, uh, the equation we give the point for the three seconds, and we are to do Times the value from the 43 seconds, you calculate the period of that building in its 1.1 second. Yeah, and that's the difficult uh, period, <coughs> 1.5 times uh, longer than the, um, the value that I'm giving by the code. In a way, that's fine, that's conservative, that is designed for this first level where the demand will be somewhere there, but it is not so realistic either than the perspective of the protection with the future period is considered. So, uh, as I said, after some uh, discussion, it was decided to allow people to design for more realistic period estimates. So, then we get also <coughs> more representative uh, force and protection uh, for that. Okay, so, we have now this uh, new provision here. Uh, so, this is in the uh, static force network of the big of the shear. We have an equation for B, and then we have a set of provisions for periods for the different system. In three and in four, we have this new one for the one in the equation is like this for still get background. For example, it's 0.05 times the height of the water plus 0.04 times the length. Sorry, I made a This is for sure was water. The one for a very strong, which is the most commonly used for system for the right people, 0.05 times the height. And so the length. So what you see there is the length of the diaphragm and from it to the longer because we need to be able to see when we have a longer distance to convert the energy to the size of the system. And that's the new formula for the period. And then for the alternative calculation is the one. And we're using 2060, 2010 for that making period of 24. 
And uh, when we do the analysis of the system, we design the place for this additional report so that we have to do with the system, and that we can make an act. Just because of this tendency to move in one direction as we uh, did it as we did it. So it's still that we still have to do with the system. So uh, we look at different ways to correct this, and this is one, one approach that can be used by the code right now. Uh, is to put the arrays like this and it put the beam, so then it creates some kind of elastic spring in the system that will remain elastic. And then we can adjust the thickness of that spring so that we can uh, prevent things from happening. Design for a certain level of the thickness, but at the level of thickness, we will break the thickness to that point if you break it like this and then you can put the levels elastic at the thickness and then you can correct this. A nice example is the presentation sample in that we were that we found the big problems that they in found that the engineer that we designed that they were accounted for that uh, <coughs> force coming from the that problem on the structural systems. So it could also some elastic system in response to that kind of thing for the people. Okay. Anyway. Uh, <coughs> looking at the uh, at the steel systems, uh, uh, in S1614, there was no major change at that time, not five years ago, in S16. However, I just want to introduce this one here, so this is one of the systems where we improved the system. Uh, we added uh, the possibility to uh, design ETS with the modular or the basic of things. I think this is something new. And in type D, it was uh, it's possible to optimize the interior panel. So that was kind of a uh, a restraint uh, that was uh, imposed to that system. People used to think that we should use a plate that is a minimum of a quarter inch, this is a minimum of eight more, which makes the system not so economical because the fast of the one is very high. Uh, but in the 1614, we opened that a bit that it would allow people to use very thin material if you wish to do so, and also <coughs> allow the people to use uh, perforated infill panels. So you can really tune the capacity of the system, and I just put uh, a place in the discussion here to make sure that this is a known by design of the So we have all these systems in the 16, 14, and all these systems were there in the 16, 9. So there is no major change in terms of the systems that are available to design of the As I said, I will just discuss a bit about the institute, and uh, for which uh, there are new uh, possibilities. So this is the uh, CDF with the principal links. You can see those here. Okay. And the nice thing about them, there are two advantages. Of course, the first can be relating to us, you can replace them after an earthquake. So this is an example of that in the year. Uh, but in terms of fabrication, for example, we can prefab how this computes at uh, plus in the plant, we ship them to the site and then assemble uh, those uh, to the site. Okay. The second interesting aspect of it is that we can have two different eccentricities. One which would be the length of the link, and this is the value we would use to calculate the model link, what it is, and what the speculators, and this and that, and determine whether or not it is a shear or lecture. That's the same thing as before, but the bracer is not need that. Eccentricity. So braces can be spaced a little bit further apart, so then you can create more open conditions, <coughs> of course, and do it easier for this uh, system. Um, so two different uh, links uh, are being um, uh, proposed. The one is made of a certain shape with M shape, you can call the M shape like this, uh, using the, uh, the 3.5 connection feeling for M shape connection is going to be great. Same as far as we have right. Or it can be made of a 2C shape. You see them here on the side of the grid, or you see them here as well. Uh, it can be C shape, it can be W shapes that uh, <coughs> which between uh, half of the engine on one side, so you form a C shape. And then you have two of those, of course, placed on this side of the uh, of the <coughs> of the beam, and they are both uh, connected, both connected. So. Uh, 
this is a joint board research project between the University of Toronto, and uh, we look at both the links. This is the link to the links. This is the link to the links. This is the link to the links. And this is the link to the links. And this one uh, shows a scale of disparities. So this comes on the point, sleeping to the point. So the points here are not designed as sleeping to the point. So this is the link to the links. And that leads to this. Uh, shape too. But this shape is fine and you can look at the capacity you want in the new cycle. So just do a bit of the next situation again here. But besides that, of course, it's uh, very fine. You can achieve the fantastic condition you know, uh, as is the case for this post-conventional response that you see on the right. We did some tests with state tests for the new system. So you can really for both the uh, links, uh, what is uh, specified is that we have to be designed to be able to share. We don't want to have a plastic change from the end to the end the default connection to the link. And this is what the purpose is. We have short links to be able to be so that we can be more easily connected to the end. <coughs> and then uh, I remove some of the slides about the uh, if you place this snake after word, you can tear the slab and you can you can be covered with the capacity of this stem afterwards. So it shows that it's showing that it's giving a good piece of the way that was fine. Uh, in the test, it was uh, interesting as well that we applied all the rules from one side. So it's a thing that you can have some things down there, and you can send accurately the link so you could confirm uh, the equation that we have in the form of the link. Uh, the link so that uh, was the uh, interesting on this aspect. Uh, in our test program, we did we the did, we did, we did test in total on uh, links by themselves and links to within the frame. Uh, but the still need a large amount of tests for common links and all the research that I've been doing and carrying out uh, to look up the system since the mid 80s. But most of the tests were done on, on links like this that were replaced in the test setup. So basically, we got all of these two things with one set of the links that we see in this test setup. This test setup here. Yes, set up there. So there was already a lot of information on how to connect those uh, in test setup. Of course, that was not a good case of having this and final design in the building. But there was a lot of experience on what to do and what to do to make sure that the link would work very properly based on those uh, previous test programs. Uh, a few words about the uh, Christ Church in 2010 2011. It was hit by a series of earthquakes. Uh, there was even one collapse that uh, uh, had some pressure to try to do, so it was a problem with the background. But besides that, most of the things performed well. But the app to this one is <coughs> most of the structures in downtown structures actually be earthquake, uh, because most of them were concrete structures, and nobody could spell that we were able to put it up for another earthquake. Okay. Um, <coughs> except this one. This one is still there, uh, 17 stories. EBS structure. And uh, what we decided to do after the earthquake is we were still pretty straight. There was no that much uh, permanent offset. So we went into the building and we cut the link of it and we replaced them with a hand and tape for the connecting. I showed you. So this is a high up uh, without after the working uh, uh, this is just to show the evaporation operation that we have to put in the building when we cut the links. So this is in the elevator shaft. And uh, we replace all the links from this. We just cut them, then we run the trace to the slab so that we move around. And the, uh, we built, we have to get the new links in the shaft and we install the new links. And now as you see in the price search now, this system all over the place. We have to with two different systems. Uh, now it's, uh, we want to have a system that can be easily uh, repaired at the airport. So this one has been adopted uh, quite extensively. 
as well as uh, the PRD system. So the PRD first data very good, and the board for the PRD data very good. Yeah, and that's the new something. So as I said, now this is uh, uh, a little bit of code. It's going to be 14 codes, so then you have the original link as you find in the district of the code, and you can now use uh, either one of the two. Yeah. The word about the walls, I'm anxious that. Uh, now it's possible to uh, better optimize the in-scale panels that cause a problem in terms of the efficiency of the system and even cost efficiency. Uh, as you may know, when you design a type D plate wall, uh, it has to be a dual system that is uh, in the state of energy and you do a memory plane action like this. And also you have the energy distribution in the in-scale panel as well. The scale panel is quite thin. Compared to the dimension of the panel, and it will pop up quite soon under that of sugar, of course. And uh, it's a tension field that will be the tension that will be used in this type of mode. So, those plates will um, build the tension at the angle, close to 45 degrees. Plates will stretch in both directions up to a two cycle uh, plate as permanent uh, elongation, and will offer no that of the system, so you can have a system like this, so it's going to be changed. And that's why we have this building plan that creates this building on the scan uh, and energy dissipation near the zero of the community position. So uh, in our code, we designed the plate, so this is the capacity of the plate here, that uh, resists the full size of the cell, and we ask that the normal plane be designed at 25% of the size of the So basically, we have a system that can be adjusted to 25% that will be done in size of the So that's fine. And uh, it's the same thing in the US, the other the same approach. <coughs> when you do your capacity design, all the forces will come from the plate. So you have to assume that the plate will be gradient, so that you put a force in the beam, for example. Same thing for the power on so that the plate will be gradient like this. In addition to the capacity thing, the capacity thing is falling in the beam. Yeah, because of the moment for an action. And then from these forces, you can calculate the forces in the beam, forces in the column, and design the other uh, for those uh, forces in addition to that. Uh, so when do you use a minimum plate thickness, as I said before, three, six, seven, eight, eight, quarter of an inch, just because of my language that I mentioned in the lab in the, in the shop, or uh, on site, whatever, then uh, this is what was the um, practice before. Then you end up with very large forces. The, the wall is very strong, and it has a lot of overspend, and then they're all the right to a very similar piano from the column that you can use and you have the system. We think the system is not economic dumpers, I think for no right here, they're very powerful things and it makes sense, so then you can really express the last of the thing. But for a small bit, it's not so good. So tests have been performed in uh, 2000 by Shaikulu and his uh, co-workers on the using thin plates and can seem to work well. This is quite nine millimeters big. And they did many of those tests showing that if you just connect them properly around, then it's fine that they start to the performance exactly the same as what we did have in the ticket plate. And we also came up with this design where you uh, perforate the plate like this at an angle of 45 degrees angle. So you create, of course, uh, just slips between the holes that is at the end of the cycle. So you really can skew by changing the thickness, by changing the distribution of the hole, the diameter of the holes, and you know, the spacing of the holes. You can kill the strength of that plate in the reaction and in the code uh, for the problem. <coughs> this is even in the code. That was there in 2009, but not as uh, uh, as much clear as it has been in the 14th, and that has been in the 14th. But so this is the resistance of the plate by itself. This is the constant resistance that we use in the factory design. And this is the reduced capacity situation here when you use a authority that you can uh, So the very clearly given now. And you see the things like this now being built, this is in Montreal. So uh, in that case, the four-story table, I think, this one. Uh, the uh, the fabricator, what he did, he pre-fabricated the full wall in the shop. 
that it's only we just try to do why this we can put this on the top and see what it looks like. Or third part. And you just go there and install those logs and then you can back on the back on the and then you install the grand the structure around. And as you can see, <coughs> if you, you tune the, the design of the plate, I think you want just to match the uh, the required uh minimums and that's just a hundred and fifty. And I think this end plate connection is the most easy to uh, to assemble the minimum structure. And then uh, that's but it's like you're looking at this very classic second And that's maybe really nice with those very small ones that can be, those are based on the very perimeter, but it can be easily involved in the building quite easily. Okay. Uh, just to show you, I put a few slides of a test that we did with the removal of the screen to the buffer on a piece of a wall like this, the very thin material. And uh, one panel that we use the operation to check if we have uh, important comments and uh, which is operated in that operative law, which is what we did here. <coughs> so you see the design, so you really tune the design, the diameter of the whole facing of the whole screen actually the the scan that you that you want. In that test program we uh, we pushed a bit further, we studied the possibility of both uh broken the uh the input panel. Uh, we did the uh, fish plate, uh, we have been to the beans and color, and that worked out so very well. I don't want to talk about that now because it's not really cold, but uh, this is also something that uh, we're working on. So, this is the test specimen uh, in which we have the incorporated panel. We can get the ones we have not, and we wanted also to test this to make sure that everything is working fine, that we do not concentrate the value in this one or this one, and so we should have been working as uh, intended. Table. Uh, we apply this plan motion, we apply a series of plan on the wall, and we just show the one at 100% of the design, and then we put the 50% of the design. And this is that after 100% of the, uh, of the design has been built, it takes an MCD. Uh, we did that in the ES system because we didn't have to do the design. And there was a uh, bit of the thing in the panel, the thing seemed to be fine. In about the uh, action. We think we have to deal with that much of the same moment that has to be actually a huge number. Excuse me? What is the mission? The end is a big right and then only see the end. You see where it deals with the action. What is the final action? The diameter at the end of the uh, the third level, the second, and the first, so as you can see, the third level. So that seems to work fine. And of course, as I said, we shall get several launch tests before on those designs with the operation. But we uh, just wanted to see that we have to mix this with other panels. And with that, uh, work uh, just a couple of words on the section that I remove at foundation design. And uh, on the dynamic analysis, I moved the size that I was beyond, but uh, in MPC 2015, it says that uh, you can design foundation in two ways. So if you design the foundation for the full capacity of the superstructure, which I need to be in order. And then that what we go to the foundation design, 
the two types of foundations, the ones that can rotate, the ones that do not rotate. So for example, a very strong uh, mounted on the, <coughs> on the foundation wall and the, and the tiny of the building, that is assumed to be a system that we have rotated the foundation, and then we design the system to put plastic. If you are on the uh, full capacity design of the foundation, but the foundation is just a, a, a wall or a footing that is the width of the uh, spotatory stand and it is more on either side. So that system is expected to rotate from the ground, and now you are forced to calculate the rotation of that foundation. And that you have the grid coming from that location to the grid of the base of the So it's now the system that you can see from the grid. And what it does is that there is kind of a problem for two people, five stories, and then you do not have any problem with the grid. When you do that, what you will find is that grid are planted <coughs> because of the rotation of the foundation. And then you may exceed the limit of 2.5%. And it's just not in the book. Okay, so this is something that is totally unusual. I mean, I've been designing this country for years. I mean, it's very strange. It's not a big problem. Now we have to come. We have only an isolated foundation unit for a very strong or a wall like this. Then we may have big uh, problems. Of course, you can correct this by having a greater or larger foundation. You can be able to face the situation. How do you for that? <coughs> uh, but uh, this is something that we didn't have in the past. That's an important uh, aspect. And then I said that uh, uh, one approach is to design the, the foundation for the full capacity construction. In the code, this is that you see, it says that for some cases, you are now assumed to design the foundation for reduced forces, knowing that the foundation will not fail. Then there will be more or uh, less. Force the man on the foundation because of that behavior. And then there are some force levels that you have to find the foundation for, but it's lower than a full class. So there are different paths. This is directed by NDC, but then you have to move the paper between the two codes to get the details for the foundation design. And the second topic that I have removed is that we don't need an analysis. So we see more and more new systems uh, being proposed, uh, especially in steel, because we need to be able to implement the things in the state. It's then conducted in steel structure. Uh, for those who have uh, to do manual kinds of analysis, we can also do the comment. Uh, so now in the commentary, when we see the computer team, there's about three pages of guidance how to perform the analysis. And there's also a new section on how to select and uh, scale. Uh, one motion by this is the red and then this is the information that was not there before, before we have the HP paragraph. That has been extended uh, significantly, it will be extended even more in the 2020 code, uh, because now we have some performance based uh, design requirement, and we open more and more the, the door to new systems. Instead of having a new system, we go to the development of a new system, provided that we <coughs> and perform any work of other analysis to demonstrate the performance. Okay, so quickly, 2020, and again, if you have questions, we uh, can discuss after. I just want to go up to spend too much time with these guys. Uh, what is coming? Uh, we just had the last two meeting, uh, show meeting for the NDC uh, 2020 in the weekend. There are still a few issues uh, that we have to resolve in the next few events. And if you see me regarding the text, so I, don't, I'm not, I cannot show much the, the details of those uh, provisions at this point because there are still the revision process. But I'll show a bit uh, what's coming. Uh, for seismic data, seismic categories, so this is new. There's a new uh, irregularity, so the columns uh, that uh, has to be um, considered in the code. A few words about the new system systems that should be uh, in 16, 19. And uh, if you want about the common space design. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the seismic data in 2020 will no longer be in the code, it will be on the website. And you just go there, enter the coordinate of your site, and you get the, the seismic data. Site the text, the foundation factor that uh, we examined in this book, and that will disappear. That has been incorporated in the hazard calculation. So I'm going to go to the new to do the hazard calculation. 
in the past everything was done from class inside class C. We all get to concur work for them. And then we have foundation practice group of other sites. We can buy from the case of the Now all the affiliates in the relationship that we learn is the effect of them. I don't call it the main distance and the effect of the main distance of the main distance. And then we run for different site plans. So now the passive translation was done in couple of the site plans. <coughs> so that we don't need any more site coefficients. So there is a way to be uh, uh, done. Most likely, and we just kind of like that in the weekend, we will enter on the website, of course, with the location of the site, the VS of the site, that is given by the geotech engineer, and we will get the values, the test, the test value, including the site of the engineer, and it will be no site class anymore. We just go there with the VS. That's it. If you have, uh, if you don't have a VS3, then you can get uh, the way to ask you is that you can be there and you can get the previous penetration static penetration value in the space front of the on the plate as determined in a side class. Then you will go to the same table as what we have today. You go to determine your side class on the website. You can say I don't have a VS, I have no side class. So you push on, of course, you call the penetration side class and the value should be given to you. But then no. You can't factor anymore uh, for the application. Uh, that would be much simpler than uh, before for the user. Of course, the um, seismicity, there's no data on seismicity, so the seismic data has been um, uh, revised or visited uh, for this uh, whole cycle. And there's a new call the system uh, that uh, this is for uh, this Columbia. There's a new call system in the Victoria region that is a also Vancouver that has been included in the hazard model. They revised the uh, rate of testing that has happened, so the, the, the return period for the large earthquake has been um, revisited, and as well as the seismic model that has been changed a bit the sources that we had before. Uh, so now it gets more closely the location of past earthquakes, and that changed the uh, uh, reduced the value in Victoria, reduced the value in Vancouver, and it was the east. And uh, so these are the changes, and of course that has the effect on the value. On the value. But this is British Columbia, the city is there, so you see that in the forecast, uh, I present that in a different thing now, uh, site like B, site class C, even if you don't have site classes in water, calculation of them for different site classes, and site class B, and you see that for uh, stiff sites, uh, we have reduction, reduction in most cases, regardless of the period. Except after a very long period, and this is because of this. So the, uh, the rate has been reduced, uh, the rate has been reduced, the rate has been reduced, and you have more effect on the subduction earthquake that produced uh, the land at large period, which is a large increase in top quality. Okay? And if you move to the different side, you see that it's uh, reduced in general for all this period, and for soft side, you can. Uh, on the on the location that one goes up, goes down. But the variation of significance, as you can see, of plus 20%, minus 20, minus 20. So those are not small numbers. If we thought that uh, seismic the knowledge about seismic activity and seismicity in the, in the region will kind of uh, converge to something, but it seems to, to do like this in both cycles. They always come up with new. Uh, the whole system in ways to address this and to uh, calculate the <coughs> and that. And this is what we uh, have. Uh, uh, so in BC, I'm not that bad. See what happened in the So 14, 15 percent of the all of the And this is mainly because uh, of this project in GA. Uh, this is the motion activation project in the east. And if we did that in the west, and the in the west, and the video for the east. Uh, we don't have much seismic uh, data in the east, and it's also a little quick from the data. Those are a small entity, and we do the same thing all the time. So it's a large uncertainty, and the way you treat that uncertainty has been revised. It took 10 years to come up with these uh, new uh, proposals. And uh, using those new acquisition <coughs> relationship has increased uncertainty, and that resulted uh, in this uh, issue. And 
Ontario's project and 10 to 50 percent will require the place. So that's major. So in the BC, we're not that bad with 20 40 percent. Seismic categories, uh, if for those who use the code, you probably have those uh, parameters and the of the that the So we add those everywhere in the speed code, it's even worse. So we have to specify the that are about 25 times, it's not more. Uh, so we decided to replace those by uh, seismic categories. So this is a bit similar to what we have in the US. So we have four categories. And of course, we use the same input parameters to define those categories, but what you see in the code is if you are the C1, you do this. If you are the C3, you do that. But it's not easier to handle. So if you decide at the beginning of your design, you have to use the category you pick, and then you can just go to pick that categories. And that category will be based both on short period and long period. So you have to map the key to determine the problem. And uh, we just saw that the uh, seismicity has increased, in speaking, in Canada. And uh, when we did the definition of the seismic category, it was based on the 2015 uh, seismic data that we had. So this is the distribution in uh, seismic category 1, the interest, uh, to, to 4 here. And with the new seismicity, we won't change the limit. So we decided that uh, the seismicity increase, we have to deal with the building of the
So, important aspect uh, from uh, this presentation, I think, is ice data is continuously uh, evolving, and I think that will not change. We think that we uh, decide what it is, we have enough information, and we should see that's it, and we should see the case. Um, and the distance of development in the last uh, 10 years or so to uh, improve seismic care skills at the important in system, uh, especially to respond to the needs of the flooding and the understand. After one design, it's quite important. Uh, and so uh, there is a shift, it's pretty uh, modest at this time towards performance base. There's a feeling that there will be more and more in the execution of the code, there will be more in the commentary as well, uh, rather than the way that we can get in our computers. And uh, the problem of steel, uh, the, uh, the steel industry is comfortable with the fact or confident that the systems are suitable to achieve a nice seismic performance pretty easy. And to uh, concentrate the damage in just a few components, or to avoid the damage by using uh, a dense device in the system. And uh, so I think that we have to be able to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, the, the way it works is that we do the accumulation equations that we have today. I don't know how much shaping 